Hello and welcome to another episode of the Losers Win the Game Fantasy Football Channel. I am your host, Jacob Brown, and we are here to talk about the NFL Week 3 DraftKings Top 5 Stacks that you need to be rostering in your tournaments. Single entry, large field, any way you need to go about it, multi-entering. These are the top five teams that you need to be focusing on when building these rosters. So let's go ahead and get after it. But if you enjoy this content, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content just like this. And yeah, guys, I'm excited about this week three slate. So let's go ahead and get after these top five stacks. But before we get into the video, let's just go over quickly the importance of stacking. Stacking is a strategy where you roster a quarterback and one or more of his past catchers with the hope from a strong offensive team that it will help each other put up big numbers. Look for high point total games, roster players from the opposing team, as known as run back options, and 3v1 stacks equal quarterback, two pass catchers, wide receiver, tight end running back, and one player from the opposing team, preferably another pass catcher, wide receiver, tight end, running back. We will also be going over today 2v1 stacks where you have a quarterback and one of his pass catchers and then one player from the opposing team, preferably another pass catcher. So yeah, that's just a brief rundown of what you should be doing when you are stacking. But let's go ahead and get after number five. At number five, we got the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the New York Jets. The Bengals stack is looking pretty damn good at this moment in time and they can very well be up in the top three range by the end of the week uh joe burrow at 6600 is just looking awesome at his uh value range of 3.08 uh with a decent small ownership hayden hurst looking like the second best stacking option at 3900 dollars he's projected to score almost 10 points he has a two and a half point value and his ownership is only four percent which is great t higgins at 6100 looks to be the best passing option at his price point for joe burrow at 15.4 and has a two and a half value rating with nine percent ownership not bad at all joe mixon someone we'll talk about here in a little bit he's projected to score 17 points with a 2.24 value at 14 percent Jamar Chase at $8,100. Also projected to score 17 points with a 2.10 value due to that high price point. He's my least favorite stacking option for Joe Burrow. The run back options are the main reason why the Bengals are at number five because it just seems like it's whoever's hot that week for the Jets is the guy you should roster and for DraftKings purposes is most of the time you won't pick that guy. So I really like Michael Carter this week in all formats, not just when I'm stacking the Bengals. I'm probably going to be playing him quite a bit throughout uh, all my lineups this week. So he's definitely my favorite runback option for Bengals stacks. Tyler Conklin is my second favorite option uh, just due to price point and projection and value. Only being 2% owned is also a plus, but keep in mind it's only thursday so these projections will update ownership will update uh but look garrett wilson Corey davis elijah moore any of those three guys could go off on any given sunday and i would say if you're playing 150 lineups go ahead play play all three of those guys but if you're trying to condense your uh lineup lineups and you're trying to condense your player pool Let's say you're only playing five lineups and you want to do one of these stacks. Take a chance on Garrett Wilson. He's my third favorite Jets player and the last Jets player I'm even considered playing this week. Um, at that price point, he looks decent, a decent projection. Uh, not that great of a value, but the ownership's worth the risk. So, yeah, as of right now, Garrett Wilson is the last piece of this puzzle. Uh... 
here's some of the rules that I have when stacking these uh, teams. Uh, Bengals top stacks we just went over. Burrow, Higgins, Hurst, Chase, Mixon. Jets top run back options are Carter, Conklin, and Wilson. No double tight end lineups. That means don't play Hayden Hurst and Tyler Conklin in the same lineup. We don't play double tight ends here. Uh, if you want to do that, I mean, hey, it's everybody's own money and it's everybody's own risk. But double tight ends statistically hardly never works. 3v1 stacks, primary way to go. Uh, I say 3v1 stacks are the primary way to go is because Joe Burrow's got a lot of options. And I'm willing to take bets on those options more than I am saying like the Jets options. So Burrow, Hayden, Hurst, and Higgins, that's a good option. Or Burrow, Hayden, Hurst, Jamar Chase. You got to pick and choose, but yeah, 3v1 options are the primary way to go. Uh, I'm not doing any, any 2v1 stacks with the Bengals and Jets. And it's okay to play Joe Mixon in stacks with Joe Burrow. Uh, he's gotten some pretty decent amount of targets the first two weeks. I don't see any reason why he won't be getting those same options in uh, week three. So, yeah, that's my rundown of this Bengals Jets stack. Tell me what you think in the comments section. Will you be playing Bengals, Jets, or uh, do you like someone else? But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to number four. At number four, we got the team that set the league on fire last week. If you didn't play them, you were missing out. Um, at number four, we got the Miami Dolphins. And my stacking interests are pretty simple. It's Tua, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, and then you got the run back options of Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, and Dawson Knox. They all got decent point projections and value. So yeah, those are my main key interests. Um, so yeah, those are the top plays, and 2v1 stacks are preferred more than 3v1 stacks at a small amount. Um, so I'm only going to play two on Tyree Kill or two on Jalen Waddle and run them back with Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, or Dawson Knox. Uh, it's just real risky to play both Hill and Waddle. I mean, they both produced the first two weeks at pretty decent levels, especially last week. But I don't expect Tua to throw the ball as many times as he did last week. This is either going to go one of two ways. Either this is going to be a blowout game and the Miami offense can't get anything going. Or it's going to be a real competitive game, but slow. And I think the Dolphins would prefer the game to be slower than quicker. Because Josh Allen will take them all the way to the house if... They play this quick back and forth game that they did with the Ravens. So, as of right now, 2v1s are way more preferred than 3v1 stacks. I might do like one 3v1 stack just to stay on the safe side. I do, in these stacks, I usually do about seven lineups from each stack. And I feel comfortable in doing 2v1s preferred to 3v1s. So, that's my number four. Let's go ahead and move on to number three. At number three, we have the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to be one of the most popular stacks on the week. Uh, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Irv Smith. Look, they're going to be expensive, and it's for a pretty worthy cause. I mean, last year, these were some of the best games of the slate. Both times they played each other. Uh, I expect nothing less. I mean, Justin Jefferson should go off. Adam Thielen, he's had some pretty big opportunities to do some things the last couple of weeks, and they just hadn't panned out. But I think this is finally the week he bounces back. Dalvin Cook, a lot of season long people are pretty angry with him and the way he's performed so far this season. But I think this is also an ultimate bounce back spot for Dalvin Cook at that price point. At that value, at that projection, I would love to see what he does. I'm going to be rostering him. And then Irv Smith might had his bounce back week after having a zero point outing against the Packers week one. He came out and did his thing in week two. So I totally think he's going to be more involved in the offense 
as we get closer, I have him only as an X right now. He's probably my least interest uh, Vikings player. But yeah, I have interest in this game, and I think y'all should too. TJ Hawkinson for the Detroit Lions looks to be one of the best run back options, along with Amara St. Brown and DeAndre Swift. Those are the only three players I have interest in running back Vikings stacks. Um, 3v1 stacks are the primary way to go. Just due to the fact we got so many different options for Kirk Cousins. No double tight end lineups, no double running back lineups. That just isn't a very profitable way to play uh, DraftKings. And it's okay to play Cook in stacks with Cousins. If you look at Dalvin Cook's uh, reception stats, he's had like five and six targets the first two weeks of the season. I don't expect that to be going down anytime soon. It could even go up this week if it's a very competitive game. So uh, definitely play Dalvin Cook with Kirk Cousins. It's fine. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this week three top three stack. So let's go ahead and move on to number two. At number two, we have the Buffalo Bills. And I'm extremely excited to talk about them because they're finally on the main slate. They've been on showdown slates for the last two weeks playing the rams in week one on thursday night to kick off the season and then playing the titans on monday night last week we have not yet talked about the buffalo bills for the main slate i'm glad we finally got some josh allen step on the exaction here and those are the main two i want to get involved uh i have interest in gabriel davis as long as uh, gabriel davis i mean as long as he plays he did not play on Monday night last week, so I'm expecting him to be ready for this week three contest. $6,300, he looks pretty interesting as a different option because he's only 5% owned, and that'd be a great leverage off of Stephon Diggs. And then I have interest in Dawson Knox at $4,100. He looks pretty good Monday night against the Titans. Uh, I expect him to get heavily involved this week as well. Tyree Kill. Jalen Waddle are the only two run back options I'm taking serious uh, for my run back options on Buffalo stacks. 2v1 stacks are preferred for this, but I will have some 3v1 stacks at a small amount. Uh, Josh Allen has a little bit more complex offense and more people to uh, divide the ball to. I know it didn't look like that Monday night because Stephon Diggs basically got everything, but you got to keep in mind Gabriel Davis was not there. But the week Gabriel Davis was there when they played the Rams, it was like he was spreading the ball to everyone. Everyone was getting a piece of the pie, and I expect that to happen again in week three. So um, I will have a little bit of 3v1 stacks, but I'm going to key in on 2v1 stacks here. Just due to the fact there's not a lot of passing options for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. It's just those two guys that I'm interested in running back. So yeah, that's my number two top five stack. At number one, we have the Los Angeles Rams returning in that spot. They just look completely awesome at this value spot for week three. Matthew Stafford at $6,500 is projected to score 28.8 DraftKings points with a 3.2 value, but only 7% own. So that means, when you're looking at these other ownerships, let's go over it for a second. Tyler Higby at $4,500 is projected to be the best value tight end on the main slate, with 13.2 DraftKings points projected and 12% owned. Vince Gobernick is also at a great value at $3,400. He's at 9.8, with a 2.88 value and a 3% ownership Dang, that just looks awesome. And then you got Cooper Cup at $9,900 for 27 DraftKings points at 2.73 value at 15% owned. So what does this tell you? Stafford is not getting played that much. I mean, 7% is a decent ownership for quarterbacks, but looks like people are just playing Higby or just playing Cooper Cup or just playing Ben Skobernick. They're not considering pairing Stafford with Higby, pairing Stafford with Cup or Skobernick. So... That's why this stack's so awesome because once you combine these ownerships, you're not gonna get that high of an ownership per stack as you would some of these other stacks that we've discussed. The best runback option for the Arizona Cardinals looks to be Zach Ertz at $4,600. 
He's projected to score 11.3 DraftKings points with a 2.46 value and that's 6 point or 6% ownership, which is just too low for the uh, the production that he's uh, performed so far this season. Then you got James Conner, who's ticked down in salary. He also had that Q tag on him early in the week, but it looks to not be too serious. It looks like he'll be ready to go. But at $6,200, he's too cheap. He's low owned as well. 14.8 DraftKings points at $6,200 is just way too low for James Conner. He's one of my favorite runback options as well. And then Marcus Keith Brown is my least favorite runback option uh, at $6,000 flat. He's projected to score 12.10 DraftKings points with a 2% 2.02 value and 8% ownership. So those are my interests for this LA Rams Arizona Cardinals game. Um, I would say no double tight end stacks and 2v1 stacks are preferred, but 3v1 stacks at a small amount. So. Yeah, I'm going to be playing Stafford and Higby. I'm going to be playing Stafford and Cup. But I'm not afraid to play St Cup, uh, Stafford, Cup, and Skobernick. I'm not afraid to play um, Stafford, Cup, and Higby. I probably wouldn't do Higby and Skobernick together. But those are the only pairings that I'm interested in as of right now. But yeah, that's my number one stack. Let me know in the comments section what you think your number one stack is. And... Uh, also drop in the comments, do you like my top five list? Let me know. There you have it for us here at the Losers Win Again Fantasy Football channel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and that notification bell to get more content just like this. My Patreon provides these sheets we've discussed today and much more for a $5 a month fee. Drop down in the comments to ask me about it. Subscribe to my social media outlets for updates until the slate locks. I have a TikTok, Instagram, of course a YouTube channel, and a Patreon. I hope to see you there. Love talking to everyone about the slates. And uh, be ready for the next video. We should be dropping one Friday evening or Saturday morning. But yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.